Hello survivors and welcome to another Walking Dead Road to Survival video and in this video we're going to be taking a look at the week ahead in RTS, the events that are on the way, the tournaments that will take place and the rewards that will be on offer in them. When I go over everything of course I will take the fact that the Conquest update is incoming as a heavy factor on any recommendations I will make to you for events and so on. So first up we'll look at the weekly calendar and it is of course Battle Pass 5 continuing as you can see with the pink days at the top of the calendar. New missions will drop on Monday so make sure you complete the current week's missions. If you did not finish the missions like using raid cans like I didn't, you will have to just do one raid and then use a raid can, do another raid, use a raid can just to be able to get through that one. A little frustrating but it's probably worth just getting the points that way. When it comes to the events, we have the continuation of Road to Mythic and the Roadmap Mania events. Road to Mythic has now made it into week three. And as you can see on the right hand side, we are going to be having Alert as one of the weekly traits. And you can see Negan, Minerva, Raulito, Axel, the Trader and Pete Anderson will be the characters that will be in the Grey Market. I believe Axel, Trader and Negan are the only characters in here that are worth more than two mythic tokens once the conquest update comes live so I would not go in on any of the other characters unless you're going to be finishing them and I mean really close like maybe a couple of thousand if you need eight or nine thousand cards to finish Raulito I think it would probably be better off going for Negan, Axel or the trader instead just because they are worth more mythic tokens if we scroll down to the strong section, pretty much the same situation here, but the only character that's worth three for the strong characters is going to be Michonne on the far right hand side. You can see the rest are just worth two mythic tokens. So same sort of situation. Don't go in too heavily on those other characters unless you're finishing off their collections. So that's Road to Mythic and the traits, like I say, will be alert and strong for those weekly missions to get your extra RTM tokens and those gold S-Class cards. And it's definitely worth getting to 11 of these S-Class gold cards just to see what these mythic gems have in store for us. We can get a maximum of five from completing all of these missions, but we'll have to wait and see. It'll be interesting to see what they're going to bring on board. If we read it, it says, collect mythic gems in the road to mythic event to redeem for mythic rewards in the mythic launch event. Mythic used quite a lot there. But that is giving me the indication at least that what we will get out of it will be mythic based be it gear be it potentially mythic characters themselves tokens or something towards a you know an event like it says in the launch event towards a mythic it could be like welcome to mythic right now we've got road to mythic there could be a, a welcome to mythic event once the actual update drops if you have any thoughts on what that could be other than my little sort of mess around on my stream where I keep saying it's an ostrich egg, but uh, I don't think we're getting an ostrich character. I'm going to rule that one out. And the Roadmap Mania event is ongoing. It's going to last pretty much the exact same time as Road to Mythic is. It was a very small event announcement, so I didn't make a video on it. Basically, you log in every day. You just do a couple of, you know, roadmaps. Three roadmaps gets you three bronze salvage tokens, six Roadmaps gets you three more plus a world energy can. It's actually pretty nice. You're going to be able to get quite a lot of world energy this way. Um, so it looks like what? We're going to be able to get over 20 more world energy cans if you're short on them. This is going to be your nice like refill stock so that when the conquest update comes out, you'll be able to blitz through that world map if you so wish. Now, a new event is starting on the Monday, and I did go over this yesterday in a video. It is Sweet Choice. If you want a big breakdown on how the event works, please check out that video that I did. But basically, you're going to be able to get yourself a hell of a lot of trainers if you so wish. There are other rewards you could potentially go for instead, but as a minimum, you'll be able to get 180,000 XP's worth of trainers per day as long as your faction completes those mission events. 180,000 XP is 15 bennies, and this event does last pretty much two weeks. So you're looking at pretty much 2 million XP, which is very nice indeed. We have the continuation of the Sugar Rush login event. Again, this event looks pretty decent. Just log in, get some extra rewards, stuff that's going to help you. And if you want to buy the little Valentine's like chocolate box, you can double your rewards. And I think it's pretty worth it, honestly. You can get it for like 
I think it's under ten dollars. Just the trainers alone. I think there's some Bernadettes in here. Let me just double check. There we go. There are a couple of Bernadettes. There is, of course, some Bennies in there. There's tons of other trainers. You're going to get yourself lots of bits and pieces towards, uh, you know, characters being able to level them up and so on and so forth. So, yep, not too bad. Some armory tokens on top, some gear, and then lastly, we're going to get a bundle of RTM tokens to finish it off. The Sugar Rush event does last nine days into March, but that's basically giving you a little bit of a buffer if you did miss a login day. If you log in for all 20 days before the 9th of March, you're going to be absolutely fine. We have Bloody Valentine event actually finishing up, and I think by now a lot of people will probably have finished the faction missions with their faction. This gave a lot of RTM tokens as rewards, which is really nice. There are a couple of extra solo missions you can do for the extra bows. I think you have to do 150 faction support and win 25 friendly jewels. It's definitely worth doing this because you can get yourself extra rewards in the museum with those extra bows. Personally, my priority is to pick up the weapon, even though I don't think it's like amazing. It is nice. It does look nice, but I can't really think of how it could be really utilized to a really high standard. Um, on an attack team, I generally want my characters to do damage. I don't know. Maybe it could go in the hands of a support healer or something like that if I was to ever use one on attack with mythic characters. But we'll have to wait and see what characters are available that could actually utilize that. But it's nice to just have a weapon on your roster. I have picked up one of these crates already. And the one I went for was with Michonne and Morgan. And I did it because I have quite a lot of progress towards Morgan already. He was in some of the crates for the events just before Road to Mythic started. So I have access to tons of his cards and thought I might as well get a 2k advance on his cards. I would definitely only prioritize characters that can give three Mythic tokens or above. I think Michonne and Morgan in this crate. I also think Andrea does in the Rick and Andrea crate. And Abraham does in the Rosita Abraham crate. The best character, of course, is Jesus. But you've not really got access to any more of his cards. So you'd only pick this up if you've somehow you were the 2000 short to get him as an S-Class character. And you hadn't already claimed two of his five stars. Otherwise, i definitely go for one of those three Mythic Token characters. So the last event on the calendar will be finishing this week as well. It'll be Rodathon. And it's just been a, like a background event going on. There was some issues with this. You might have noticed we did get a couple of extra tokens compensation. So it wasn't too big a deal, honestly. We just basically got a, a couple of extra pulls, which is nice. Basically, Rodathon, same sort of thing we've seen before. This is the third or fourth iteration. Uh, it just basically tracks your progress over multiple SR tournaments and gives you some stash opens or some wheel pulls based on that i still believe sr is one of those tournaments that needs to go under some massive quality of life updates just to make it a little less chore like and a little bit more entertaining i did used to like sr quite a lot but when you've been playing the game for as long as some of us have doing the same thing over and over again that just takes huge amount of time where's thin so we need something that is going to make that time consumption part of sr be reduced. Fingers crossed we get from the next Rotothon. I think I've said that every single time Rotothon's popped up. So that's it for all the known events this week. I would not be surprised if we had an event though start up due to two events obviously ending. So prepare yourselves for news on Wednesday, Thursday or Friday for probably what is going to be a week or two week event. Hopefully it's going to have a lot of Ascendance medals in there. Just saying. Lockdown is in dire need of silver ascendance medals. I need somewhere in the region of two to three million just to ascend the ones that I've got right now. That and they're only five star ascendables for S class characters. I've got no idea what I'm going to do once I get into the mythic era. So please, lots of ascendance medals. Lots and lots. Now we move on to the tournaments and every single reward in the main tournaments other than CRW are going to be RTM tokens to claim whatever cards you wish during this week, next week, so on and so forth. We have got the normal schedule of a double solo level up followed by a faction level up. You are going to need to level up those characters in the trait missions for Road to Mythic. And it's just best to obviously try and time that during a level up tournament just to get as much out of it as possible. You're not going to get huge amounts of points because it is only tier 1 and tier 2, but it all counts. 
I would recommend not leveling up any S-Class character above tier 2 and save those resources. Just put every single bit of XP into 5-star Ascendables and 6-stars that can become S-Classes for the Road to Mythic event to give yourself as many Mythic tokens as you can day 1 of the Conquest update. We have got a Faction Raid Tournament at the beginning of the week and that's going to be quite nice. Again, sort of same sort of situation where the rewards from this are Armory Tokens. I've been seeing a lot of people still upgrading attached weapons on S-Class characters. Personally, I would 100% avoid that. Even if it's just going for 1535s and stuff, those tokens are going to be needed long term. When you get to the Mythic Era, a lot of the characters have attached weapons, so we're going to need to 5-star a lot of weapons. So those armory tokens are going to be vital for that. If you do want to work on weapons, you can obviously work on weapons that are not attached to characters. I would 100% recommend weapons that give AP to self or AP to the team. These are going to be quite important when it comes to attacking with mythic characters. So the tough 20% AP to self weapons, or the fast Michonne's Wacky Zashi that does the same 20% AP to self, or fast 8% weapons. A lot of characters require one of these weapons to get a natural rush on attack right now with the mythic characters. So you're going to need at least one. Then we have the last survival road tournament for Rodathon. Just complete this, obviously, if you've completed the other ones, you're gonna get a lot of pulls on that stash. More RTM tokens for every five pulls. Lots of trainers, lots of stuff. Um, you should be able to complete one full like completion of the stash by now. I have already. And then you're just going to get, I don't know, maybe 10 pulls into the next stash. Maybe, hopefully, get some nice big trainers like the Bernadettes. Now, the last tournament of the week, of course, is going to be CRW. We have not had the rewards announced just yet. Generally, that will happen on the Wednesday or the Thursday. But I would not overspend your resources to get yourself into a good position for the CRWs for the rest of the S-Class era. Definitely prioritize your time and resources on just basically getting yourself into position for Mythic characters. But that being said, have fun during CW this weekend. I might do a stream, I might not. I didn't stream my last CRW just because I was unwell. We'll see how I'm feeling this weekend. So that is pretty much it for the week ahead in RTS. Unless anything special or surprise gets sort of dropped on us, like I said, there most likely will be a new event happen. So keep an eye out for that. If there is a big one, I will, of course, bring you information regarding it. So stay tuned during the week. But that is the end of this video, guys. If it was helpful for you, please hit that like button. Maybe share with your faction if you so wish. If you are not subscribed, hit that subscribe button to know when all of my videos are released, when my live streams go live. Make sure you have got notifications turned on to all as well. Otherwise, you will not be just notified all the time. It will just be random when you get notified or not at all. However, that is the end of this video. I want to thank you for the ongoing support of my channel. And as always, keep on surviving, guys. Keep on surviving.